Hello everyone, welcome back to another Roblox tutorial video. So, it's been a month or so since the last one, and as you guys can kind of see, there's a few hints. The title, and well, the title is a big hint, and a small hint is what displays at the bottom of the screen. Press E to chat. Now, you might, uh, you might realize, well, okay, the video kind of explains it. The video title explains it. So, if you don't know what exactly this is, and if you didn't read the video title, or you just happen, don't catch on to what I'm saying... Uh, if you've chatted to any of the NPCs, or walked up to any of them in the Roblox egg hunt, it says press E to chat, and if you press E, you guys, you go into a conversation with that NPC. You don't give any input, but it gives input to you. Now, uh, we're going to kind of replicate that, and so I kind of want to go over the certain assets you guys are going to need before we get into this. So you don't need an objects folder or spawn location, but you do need an NPC folder. This is where we're going to go ahead and place in uh, NPCs when they spawn in. Then the camera over here is going to be where the camera is located. So we would be facing this way and the camera would be located here. You kind of want to position the camera uh, dependent on where, uh, where you would see the player would go and also uh, relative to the spawn. And that leads on to the NPC spawn part which uh, you can have multiple of these. You just need to be able to... Uh, I'll talk about the NPC, NPC spawn functionality later. So the NPC spawn right here, uh, that is basically going to be um, the place where the NPC spawns. It says in the name. Uh, next off from there, we're going to want uh, an assets folder and a modules folder in the replicated storage. Um, and then the NPC. Uh, you don't have to place it here. You can literally place it anywhere. But um, you're going to need an NPC. You can just, uh, usually the NPC, all you need for, uh, if you're going to use a custom NPC, you're going to want a humanoid and a humanoid root part, or else it won't really work at that point. Um, so if you want to just get one of these guys, uh, go to Rig Builder and Plugins and go to Block Rig, and that should uh, work out well. So uh, anyways, continuing on, let's go ahead and put this back in the assets. And... Um, like as you see here, you're going to need an alert and you're also going to need a message GUI. Uh, I might link those in um, down in the description below as a file. Anyways, so um, let's go ahead and get on to it. So let's go ahead and create a module. And inside this module, we're going to go ahead and do a module script. And we're going to name this uh, animation. Or actually, no, not animation, but we're going to do NPC. Um, then we're going to do local system is equal to... Uh, MD array. We're going to return system. And uh, from there, we can continue. So let's go ahead and uh, create an assets variable. And the reason why we're going to need to do that is because of we need to, it's it's simple access. We It's nothing much from there. So uh, after that, we're going to go ahead and uh, locate a user input service because we're going to need that later. So local UIS is equal to game get service user input service all right and then now we're going to go ahead and create something simple we're going to make a settings array so let's go ahead and do that so settings local settings is equal to a table and let's go ahead and do distance offset is equal to uh, let's say two and a half. Now, if you don't know what, whoops, uh, not decimal. Okay, so if you don't know what distance offset is, uh, basically distance offset is the amount of distance you have to be to uh, to be able to engage in a conversation. So if you're two, uh, if you're in a range, oh, not two and a half, sorry, five and a half makes more sense that way. Um, if you're in the distance of five and a half studs radius, uh, it will go ahead and pop up saying press E to chat. And that's kind of what we want. Now we'll also do animation offset. Now what's an animation offset? Well, uh, basically, let's say whatever you set the animation offset to, uh, basically, if you're in, let's say in this example, 25 stud radius, and uh, you are in the site of the NPC, the NPC will go ahead and wave its hand. Like if you played Pokemon Brick Bronze, how uh, if you get in site, it initiates a battle, this is kind of what it's like. Then we'll have an animation cooldown time. And we'll make that two and a half seconds. Now, animation cooldown time. So let's say you walk in front of uh, the NPC's view and it waves, um, waves its hand. Uh, basically, from there, it's basically saying this. Um, it's going to say, well, okay, well, 
we just waved our hand. We're going to wait two and a half seconds before we wave our hand again if the player is still in our sight. That's basically what it's going to be like. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and set our key. So we're going to uh, do key equals E. Now, if you are familiar with user input service, you might be saying, well, spooks, uh, key has to be a upper string, not a lower string. Well, actually, you're incorrect in this point because you haven't even seen the rest of it. Uh, though, of course, um, basically what we're going to be doing here is in later when we do the user input, uh, we're going to make it so you can put lowercase or uppercase and it'll work both ways. And we'll, and uh, you guys will see that later. So we're going to go ahead and create our functions area. So functions. And uh, from there, we're going to go ahead and do function system.new. And we're going to go ahead and do npc type. Then we're going to do spawn a messages and camera angle. Now, uh, NPC type is going to be uh, the NPC we want to grab. So, for example, the NPC from assets. Spawn A is going to be our spawn, NPC spawn. The messages is going to be an array of messages, and we'll shuffle through that when we're doing it. And the camera angle will be the camera here. So, let's go ahead and continue here. So, local player is equal to game.players.local player. Local car or character is equal to player.character or player dot character added wait now you may be asking if you're uh, familiar to this and uh, if you're familiar to this mes method you may be asking well spooks why don't you do repeat wait until player dot character added then you have the character there when you know it's been uh, it's in existence well the reason why we don't do that is because that's a poor method to choose it's a poor method to go ahead and develop with I recommend that you do uh, player dot character or player dot character added wait because uh, if it, if there's already a player dot character, then it just skips a second argument. But if we if there is not a player dot character, if the player's character is not in existence, then when the character uh, we wait until the character added event fires. Um, so that's simple. Then local camera, so workspace dot current camera, and from there we can go ahead and access the GUI and we'll make a cooldown variable. And the cooldown will be used for the animation cooldown time. So we're going to do local GUI is equal to player wait for child and then let's go ahead and do player GUI because we want to access the GUI. And then local cooldown is equal to false because we're not going to cooldown yet. Now let's go ahead and spawn the PC. This is going to go ahead and move it to our point. So we can go ahead and do uh, spawn NPC. So let's go ahead and access or index that NPC. So we're going to do local assets, not assert. I've made that mistake many times uh, when I do a variable called asset. And we're going to clone. So what we do here is we go into assets. And basically, uh, when we access a... Uh, imagine the hierarchy over here as a bunch of tables. Every item in here... Uh, it's, um, it's location is its name. So try to realize that kind of, and when you look for a certain thing, um, if you look for, if there's two assets and you find one, it'll choose, uh, the first one instead of the second one, whatever com one comes first, that one comes first. So that's kind of how, uh, the hierarchy works. It kind of, it's kind of like a bunch of tables with a bunch of data in it. So let's go ahead and continue. So we're going to go ahead and local CLN and we're going to have to keep that a bit uh, to the side. So we're going to do spawn function. CLN is equal to spawn a class name. Now you may be asking, well, why are we doing a spawn function? And the reason why a spawn function puts it on a different priority. So, oh, you don't want to shoot. Actually, uh, we're not actually doing the spawn functions yet. We will be soon. We're actually going to put it into pico function. Now, pico function, you may be asking is why are we doing the pico function now? And the reason why is because pico functions put it on a completely different path. It's basically saying if there's an error, we're not going to have that error stop the whole script. It's going to allow the script to continue. And then you may be asking, well, why are we saying CLN to spawn a class name? And we're indexing the class name to see it because we're going to make it so uh, so we have you, and I wanted to make this so you guys can use it for anything. We're gonna, we can have spawn a as a C frame or a part. If it's a part or a model, then we'll go ahead and do something else. But if it's just a C frame, we'll just set the primary part C frame. 
And uh, actually, I forgot to note. When you go into assets and when you're on the NPC, make sure the primary part is set to humanoid root part. Uh, that's an important as aspect to it. So let's go ahead and continue here. So uh, let's go ahead and do if CLN, then we're gonna go ahead and do if part or model. So if spawn A is a base part, then we're gonna go ahead and do NPC set primary part C frame. And we're gonna go ahead and do spawn A dot C frame plus vector three dot new zero NPC dot humanoid root part plus 0 0.250. Now you may be asking, oh wait, actually, no, dot y. There we go. Not size error, but dot size dot y plus 0 0.25. Now you may be asking why. And because if we actually uh, look at the humanoid root part and we go and look at the position y 14.391, and then we look at this and you subtract it, it's actually 2.25 and the humanoid root parts is two. So really it just helps out in that aspect and it actually works quite a lot. Uh, for this kind of stuff, but you uh, this is basically based on your preference. This is based off your uh, Root uh, root offset preference. So now that's uh, out of the way. Let's go ahead and move on to something different and it's spawn a is a model and spawn a dot primary part then We're gonna go ahead and say NPC and actually, we can copy this, but from here, it's going to be a bit different. So instead of this, we're going to go ahead and do uh, spawn a dot primary part dot c frame. And uh, basically, that works out well. Now, you may be asking, well, we're sending the primary part. Couldn't we just get the primary part c frame? Well, it's basically the same thing as getting spawn a dot primary part dot c frame. It's the same thing. So uh, after that, we're going to go ahead and uh, finish this off with this. Um, so from here, we go ahead and do else if spawn a dot p, then we're going to go ahead and do that. And uh, before we do this, actually, I just realized uh, warn failed to receive. Um, failed to receive C frame of object and we're gonna give the object name of course so dot spawn a dot name and basically this is just gonna say all right you gave us a object that does not have a C frame we can't grab it for some reason why um, so then uh, if we do find a dot P which means if it finds a vector then it is a C frame so then we're just gonna do set primary part C frame and we're going to do spawn a plus vector three dot new zero mpc dot humanoid root part dot size dot y plus 0 0.25 zero and uh that seems to do the job there and so else and we're going to finish this off here no object or c frame given and that's basically it and from there we can go ahead and uh, set the MPC parent. So MPC dot parent is equal to workspace dot MPC. And uh, so let's go ahead and just uh, set up the, the GUI. And we'll just really quickly set up something for the next episode uh, to continue this. So wait for child main UE and uh, so we'll just keep it there so actually let's go ahead and just look at what we currently have so um, so if we let's go into starter GUI and we're gonna go into local script all right sorry everyone I made a quick mistake that I edited out and uh, it's supposed to be game replicated storage on modules MPC so from there we can go ahead and uh, play and you could see that we have our player here and uh, that it, it spawns right there so that's basically all for now everyone uh, look at my beautiful halo and anyways, thank you guys for all the support uh, More episodes will be coming out this week. Hopefully. I'm pretty sure it will
and uh, go ahead and rate this video. Tell me what you thought about the audio. Tell me what you think uh, of thought of this video. And uh, go ahead and leave a like. Don't forget to comment down below if you're having trouble. People will help you. I won't have time to help you because I have other things in life that's going to go on. I'll try to help you out. Uh, help you guys out. And uh, anyways, don't forget to subscribe, like if you enjoyed this video and it helped you out, and go ahead and leave a comment down below if you guys are having trouble. Anyways, like always, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.